I would like to begin by wishing UNRIST every success in the future. I think many of you are aware that UNRIST is under threat and having worked with UNRIST people for many years, and they've given me the floor a number of times, I hope you will all share in wishing you every success in your endeavour to survive. And I was proud to sign the letter to the Secretary General uh, to support that. So I wish you every success. Thanks, Tom. This is a very strange time for me because in 1985 I first advocated a basic income. And we set up in 1986 Bien, name I came up with, which obvious connotations for French, the Basic Income European Network. And after years when we were ridiculed, including inside my own organization, I have many scars to show for it, we found that hundreds of people were joining from around the world, so we renamed ourselves Pian, except we changed the E to Earth. And we have networks now in numerous countries, and everybody in this room who doesn't know about Pian should please check, and if you're interested, join, because we've been fostering research and advocacy for 30 years. And I come to basic income from four directions. The first direction, which I think is the most important, is philosophical, ethical. I believe that a basic income is a matter of social justice. And I draw my inspiration from people like Thomas Paine, uh, who understood that, these are my words, not his, but it's the essence of what he said, that the income and wealth of any of us in this room is far more to do with the efforts of our ancestors than anything you or I do ourselves. But we don't know whose ancestors contributed to our wealth and income. It could have been strangers. And in a sense, a basic income would be saying this is a social dividend, a return to the wealth created by our people. It's a sharing mechanism. And if you believe in inheritance, then you should believe in a social inheritance. So that perspective for me has always been prominent. The second perspective is that I've been arguing for 30 years that with globalization and the technological revolution and the neoliberal economic policies that we're experiencing, the 20th century income distribution system has broken down and will not come back. In other words, anybody who's relying on labor and work will be suffering from insecurity and will need to have basic security. And that's led to the books, and I have a few copies of them, which are taking me around the world, on the precariat, the growth of the precariat. And every single day, for some reason it's got nothing to do with me per se, I get invited to various conferences. I see this month, Zurich. We had a wonderful meeting of the referendum last week. Hundreds came, very prominent people. It was a great meeting. I've also been Manchester, Copenhagen, Helsinki, Prague, Budapest, Edinburgh next week and Milan with Nobel Prize winners at the end of the month. That's not me, it's the subject. It's really taken off. And the precariat consists of millions of people who are suffering from insecurity and unstable labor. And unless we provide security to them in all parts of the world, we are going to see a growth of neo-fascist populism that we're seeing with the Donald Trumps this year, and we'll see with Marine Le Pen, and we're seeing with Viktor Orban and other sundry characters. It's a political issue. I've just been invited to a secret meeting in which there's going to be three prime ministers, two presidents, and five ministers of finance from major countries. 
because they're getting along, and so they should. The next approach is that suddenly cash transfers, direct cash, cash transfers, have become a developmental tool. And this is a vital change. Before the year 2000, someone like me advocating direct cash transfers to people was laughed at. You'll waste the money. They'll all get wasted on alcohol and sex and whatever, you know? But now there's a new legitimacy to that. And I never expected to be able to say to you that we've had chances to do pilots. This, I feel, is the year of the pilots. But I have managed so far to be involved in five pilots in Africa and in India and in a sense in Brazil. And the book that we've got here, and I have some copies that are available if anybody's interested, are based on our pilots in India where we provided 6,000 people with a basic income over two years and compared what happened to those 6,000 people with 6,000 other people, similar conditions, who were not receiving the basic income. This is the first major pilot of a basic income, unconditional, paid in monthly cash to each woman, each man, and each child through the mother. No conditions. And when we launched it, Sonia Gandhi called us and said, you're going to waste all that money that UNICEF and UNDP provided. And at the end, she asked us back. And we were able to show her videos, and you could see those videos, and the results in a huge number of surveys. Very briefly, I can't go into it the details, but the welfare effects have been fantastic. The nutrition of children has improved. The health of children has improved. The health of women has been improved. Schooling has improved. Sanitation has improved. And the economic activities, the amount of work and labor has gone up. And the equity effects have been great. The people who really benefit have been the disabled, the scheduled tribes, the people on the margins. But the biggest effect of all has been the emancipatory value is greater than the money value. It gives people a sense of freedom to make choices. Now we're seeing pilots in Finland. I'm very proud to be advising Keller involved in this project. The Prime Minister is committed. He's put 20 million euros to do the pilot. And some local authorities, as you may know, Mrs. Ambassador, are want competing with each other to, to add money so that it comes to their area. I couldn't have predicted that. Nineteen cities of the Netherlands are going to bite. Earlier this year, I couldn't believe it, but in my own country, the UK, a major television corporation said, we're going to do a pilot where we give families a basic income for a few months. And would you be one of the commentators on the series, the TV series, on these transfers? I was very dubious about it, but you can see the programs and they bring tears. We are also seeing pilots in Canada. We are also seeing that suddenly people in Silicon Valley, billionaires, are putting money into doing pilots. I was invited to Silicon Valley and we have two billionaires who are competing with each other to give more money than the other one to having pilots. It's great. May they have your third one. So we're seeing a lot of changes take place. And I feel that this is a moment when the idea is being realized. It is affordable. It doesn't put off people from working. It gives people the confidence and the ability, the security. And it is a needed weapon against insecurity in this period of chronic insecurity. So I hope you will engage with the subject more thoroughly than people have done in the past. Thank you very much for listening.